welcome to my channel my name is Donna from axeratic.com and in today's video I have a video demonstration or tutorial on how to prevent or reduce the rotation on a lateral chest x-ray now I won't be going into the information in terms of your setup like your SID center and that kind of thing however um, I would be speaking about the nine different things you can ensure that you do and ensure that your patient does in order to prevent rotation because you don't want your chest to be super rotated that will throw off anatomy and it would not be as optimal it's be a suboptimal image and in some cases some cases just not optimal depending on how bad the rotation is I'm in need of an x-ray so the first thing you want to ensure is that the patient is standing at about shoulder with a pack and the reason why I say this is because a lot of times patients tend to stand like straight both feet together and especially if they aren't feeling well and in most cases if you need a lateral chest x-ray it's because you have um, I don't know like a fluid in the lungs or something like that and they, or a hernia that they want to see have a different view so chances are the patient already isn't going to be in the best of health so they'll be kind of swaying moving back and forth and side to side and we want good collimation we don't want to just open up the entire um, field so that you have a lot of scatter and all of that so in order to get the best um, image meaning that you don't have as much motion and let the patient stand shoulder with a pad feet shoulder with a pad and I'm gonna be explaining each point as I go along so that you know why you're doing certain things there is one thing you just say it but there's another thing if you actually know the reason behind it that's why you're more intentful on how you position your patient the next thing you want to do to prevent rotation is ensure that the stance of the patient is perpendicular to that of the image receptor or the bucky you don't want the patient to have like one foot further in front of each other or one foot behind or they stand in a twist at an angle to the board that is other than ooh, at an angle that is other than 90 degrees eventually by the time you leave your patient just for a few seconds to walk behind by the console to expose your image give breathing instructions all of that chances are they will twist their body position that is natural for them and in this case is however and in whatever I should say direction that they're standing in. The next thing I tell my patients is to stand closer to the bucky, step closer to it, don't lean. A lot of patients, so you have them standing here, there's the bucky on the side, you want them to go closer because you want to minimize any um, chances of magnification, right? You want them closer and they tend to do this, okay? Like, no, if you try to do this when you try to, no. You know you're gonna get some kind of rotation or some kind of off tilt to throw off something and you don't want that you want a true um, representation of what the patient has going on and if this side here then down here will be magnified because it's further away from the eye stuff like that you know so you don't want them to lean let them take an actual step into the bucky so that way they're not twisting and turning the next thing I do is I use the index and some method this is not an actual thing that is known in the world of radiography i just call it that because that's literally what i'm using my index and my thumb to and sometimes i um, use my entire finger actually but definitely with the thumb and i hold the side of them so you'll be seeing this as i'm explaining it hold the side of them to align them or like straighten them up basically because they want their backs to be perpendicular right uh, to the image receptor when i do this thumb and index position it's because i'm standing behind the patient and i want to look at them and see that they're not twisted but i also go around now to the front of the image receptor where the tube will be like in between the tube and the patient and i then use the palm of my hand to just press gently against the back to straighten them if i find they're still not too perpendicular 
right? And that's an additional step that you can take to make sure that they're not rotated. Another thing is that I let them as much as possible. Now, this is not ideal for all patients because some patients are really out of it. But as much as I can, I let them raise their both arms equally. So I don't want to remember you need to get the arms away so that the humerus doesn't superimpose on the chest. So you want it up and out of the way, right? I try to get them to raise the hands at equal height. Usually when one hand higher than the other is because they're twisting and turning um, unnaturally and that will cause rotation as well. So try to get the hands um, equidistant in terms of the height as well as, well, I should say generally that the best thing would be for them to hold on to the arm bars. So if you know that you have that, make use of it as much as possible. It's a little cumbersome and a little annoying or a bit of a hassle having to switch it around just do so. If you know you have a right lateral or a left lateral, just position it before you call any patient so then it's just for them to hold on and you know, center up and shoot. The next thing, tell your patients not to slouch. Again, if you're slouching, you don't know they might be leaning more on one side or even if you're leaning forward, like that's an odd position you want them to be standing up as erect and as upright and as straight as possible. Next thing I'm gonna tell the patient is to keep their chin up, not just because they want the chin out of the chest area, but because they want to see that they they want to see that overall alignment of the body, right? So you make sure the chin is up and center. Chances are the chin off to one side. Usually when patients, whether you're out of it or not, if you tilt your head to one side, you realize that your body kind of shift them with it too. Right, so whether they're drowsy, weak, tired, or whatever, let them as much as possible head straight forward, chin up, so that they're in a good position. And the last thing you want to do after your position, or well, before you even position, you're going to let them be aware of this. Let them know that you're going to put them into a position, and it's very important that they stay in that position, otherwise, the image will need to be repeated. That's what I tell my patients with certain um, procedures. Like, if I know it's a technical position or a position where their um where or procedure i should say where their position is of utmost importance where i have tight collimation where i work with a limited field area i tell my patients like you know this is what i would um this is what you have to do and even when i do speak to them after i position them i make sure and clearly say okay do not move i'm gonna take the x-ray now you know a little stuff like that like communication is something that you learn in radiography that helps reduce patient movement which causes motion blue which then decreases your geometric sharpness and all of that so you want to as much as possible be clear and communicate with your patients of um, the importance of them staying in that position that you put them in and that goes for all procedures right this is not the most flattering angle um, I don't know if I might refilm this if you all see it clearly I didn't but thank you all so much for watching the camera actually down so thank you all so much for watching and i'll see you all in the next one bye